Shalom, my name is Adam Wasser. For the last 15 years now, I've wanted to make Aliyah, but unfortunately, because of circumstances that I won't get into, I've been unable to do so. But recently, I had the opportunity to make Aliyah to move to Israel. Being a teacher in New York City, I've been talking to my students about my reasoning for making Aliyah and the fact that I want to live on a kibbutz, more in a religious kibbutz or a mixed kibbutz in Israel. And my students, they know about Aliyah. They, they understand Israel. They, they, they know Israel, but they don't know what a kibbutz is. So I came to the realization that, you know, a lot of people don't know what a kibbutz is. So I went online, and I'm like, what is a kibbutz? And I found some interesting videos, and I wasn't satisfied with it. So I decided, you know, maybe let me make a YouTube video about what is a kibbutz. Um, about in 1999, I lived on a religious kibbutz, uh, Shulchot, uh, Yad Beit Shan, next to Beit Shan, and to get into what a kibbutz is, about 4 o'clock in the morning, I would get up, and we go to the dining room, the Chad uh me and the group of, uh, of, of the kibbutz next, and we'd have coffee, we'd have something to eat, we go to the, the, the fish farms, the, the dog, we would haul in the fish. Um, basically, the fish farms are a bunch of um, pools uh, of, of fish, and we take a net and pull the fish in. And then, by when I would come in by noon, I would milk cows in the refit, and then by you know at night I would uh, milk cows again. And there's a lot of free time as well. Now, a kibbutz is it's a it is a socialist community. A proper kibbutz is a socialist community in the idea that you don't own your own property. You are a part of the kibbutz. You are a member of the kibbutz, which means the kibbutz owns your home. It owns the land. It owns the property, the ref the, the cow farm, the dog, the, the fish farm. It owns the, the, the fields. It owns the, the, the date farm. It owns everything that, that you are a part of. But you are a part of it, which means that it belongs to you as well. Now there are kibbutzim today that you can buy your own home and um, you know that that you can work out of the kibbutz and and be a doctor, a lawyer, whatever you want to be, but you're a part of the kibbutz, owning your own property. But a traditional kibbutz is where you're a part of a community, a, a community that you have to be a member of. It might take a year to two years to become a member, and your children, you know, are, might be a part of an organization like B'nai Akiva, Young Judea. Um, Beitar, and they go to school together, they have organizational groups together. Um, a kibbutz usually uh, has a dining room, a chadarochal, where people eat together, breakfast, lunch, and dinner is usually something that's on the side that people can take home, but you can eat at home, you can make your own meal at home. Usually with a home, with a kibbutz, is that you're put on a list, so if you have four to five children, whatever it may be, you're put on priority to have a larger home. If you're a single adult like me, then you'll be put into an apartment. But if you get married, maybe they'll give you a larger apartment. You have children, they'll give you a larger home. It depends on where you are and what is available. With an organization like Nefesh Benefesh, um, which is an organization to make Aliyah, to become an immigrant of Israel, they can help you move on to Gibbots and absorb you into that community. Um, there are many kibbutzim that are looking for people right now. Um, kibbutz Kitara, which is affiliated with Hadassah and Young Judea, located in the Arava, uh, near Elat, in the middle of nowhere, um, is very Zionistic, very traditional to the Zionist idea. Now, years ago, many years ago, children would live separately from their parents. I don't know of any kibbutz where this still applies. All children today, as far as I know, live with their parents in their home and kibbutz kitara is the same thing where the children live at home but they are very traditional in the idea of what is a kibbutz supposed to be like and they have a community where secular jews and religious jews live together now kitara is very environmental they have the uh, institute of the arva which is um you know educating people it's affiliated with um um the university of um Ben Gurion University, uh, and 
it's a wonderful institution. I will say that I am very interested in in this institution, uh, the Institute of, of the Arva, but they have a very um, pro peacenik um, environment where they take Palestinians and Jordanians and, and Israelis and they try to make a, a degree, a master's degree, whatever, um, where it's environmental and peace opportunities. So I'm a little bit funny on that. But it's still a wonderful idea. And Kibbutz Kitara, it is the ideal kibbutz where religious and secular Jews can live together. And they and and Kitara officially is a secular kibbutz, but it's it keeps kosher, keeps kosher the laws of of uh, of you know food, and it keeps Shabbat, and it has a, a shul, a synagogue, and uh, it's a wonderful kibbutz. And L Lotan, a uh, kibbutz that's younger than it, is next door and also is very similar in this idea. For the for the Bnei Akiva kibbutzim, there's about 18 Bnei Akiva, Bnei Akiva kibbutzim in Israel. And these are kibbutzim that are modern Orthodox for the most part. The Gush Etzion kibbutzim, uh, that's Kfar Etzion, Rosh Etzion, and Magal uh, Az. Uh, these are more religious kibbutzim, but they are very strong with the idea of people that are working outside the kibbutzim. They're, they're, I like them. I really have, I, I love them. And I've always been interested in them. But the problem is that they're, they're more than the idea. They have moved towards the idea of being more in, uh, the self-individual. The idea that the individual has the right to own their own property, to work outside the kibbutz in Yerushalayim or wherever. And, and have their own structure within the kibbutz. And I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for a kibbutz that, that really, the individual is a part of the, the larger society. I'm a socialist democrat. I, that's what I'm looking for. But there are a lot of opportunities for somebody who's looking for an agricultural uh, society uh, with the idea of a kibbutz. And, you know, there are many kibbutzim on the Golan Heights today. Um, none of them are religious, but um, Ortal, it's in the center of, uh, of the Golan, has a bit of a religious uh, atmosphere. So, what you're looking for in a kibbutz should, should affiliate yourself with, do you want a religious kibbutz? Do you want a mixed kibbutz? Do you want a kosher kitchen? Do you want something that has a sh synagogue? Or do you want something that doesn't have any of that? But there is a kibbutz for everyone in Israel. And there is about 230 kibbutzim, I believe, in Israel today. And the kibbutzim go back all the way back to uh, the 1880s. The largest kibbutz today uh, has 1,400 people. It's Magel Menachem, I believe something like that. It's on the Mediterranean near Haifa. And that's the largest you're going to get. Um, a kibbutz life is wonderful, but what I would recommend to anybody is that before you decide to live on a kibbutz, you should volunteer on a kibbutz and, and see what it's like, because there's a lot of work involved. It's all agricultural. Uh, there are industries. Almost every kibbutz has an industry involved. Um, Susan, excuse me, Susan is a kibbutz that's all the way on the border with Lebanon in the upper Galil, and it's really out there. It's, it's on a little hill, and uh, it, it's just really more, uh, the the reserve, the national park of Moron, is, is right on top of it. So it's really out there, um, but they don't. Their refit, their dairy farm, is not located on. It's on another kibbutz, so you don't have the. the they're affiliated with dairy farm, but they don't have the dairy farm. But they have a little bit of a mixture of secular and religious people living there. So you got to look at what is available, you know, and what is there, but. Uh, you know, kibbutz life is very, it's a quiet life. It's definitely quiet, but it is very family oriented. It's very um, in the idea of Judaism, in the idea that we are all one people, we are all united, and that there's a lot of opportunities. One day you could be working in the cow farm, the other day you could be working in the field, the other day you work in the orchards. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities and a lot of mixture of what you can get into. Um, and there's a program right now uh, under Nefesh Benefesh. Nefesh Benefesh is an, uh, it's an organization that helps people uh, with absorption to Israel. Um, if you go on Nefesh Benefesh, you can uh, make Aliyah. You can do all the paperwork and they will help you find a home in Israel. They will do the paperwork for you. 
and the, it's a very good organization that I recommend if you're looking to make Aliyah and with Nefesh Benefesh they have a, a thing right now it's called Go North moving to Israel from the north and they're offering families up to $25,000 grant to move to the north now that doesn't mean you're going to get 25000 but it's possible uh, somebody like me who is a single person eh, maybe I'll be lucky to get five to ten thousand dollars in a grant to move to the north now I want to move to the north so that's very convenient for me but if you're willing to move to the north if you're if you're open to it you know get into this uh, idea and apply to uh, Nefesh Benefesh for Aliyah and put in there that you are interested in the north project uh, go north and uh, you might be able to get some some money out of it and it could help you absorb into Israel Absorbing into Israel is not easy. Right now, Israel's economy is doing very well. Uh, there's a lot of jobs. The lo unemployment is very low. Um, but still, as an immigrant, it's very difficult, especially if, he if English is your first language and Hebrew is whatever. You know, it's going to be difficult. Now, Israel, if you make Aliyah, will pay for your plane ticket. They will pay for your Opan, which is to learn Hebrew for six months. And they will... Um, give you other benefits. Now if you go into the IDF, the Israeli uh, Defense Force, by doing that you'll be covered for about three years with economic help. Um, so it's very, I would recommend that after you do Opan, learning Hebrew on wherever, I would recommend a kibbutz. I really recommend doing a Opan on a kibbutz um, because you're, you'll get extra help, you'll be in a community and you'll, you'll be closer to helping you learn Hebrew. But um, after you do that Opan, I would recommend go straight to the army. And after you're done with the army, Israel will pay for your college degree, um, whether it be a bachelor's degree or a master's degree, Israel will pay for it. They'll give you two years free for a degree. And that's my intention uh, as well. So, you know, kibbutz is a great opportunity, but I recommend volunteer on a kibbutz before you decide to move on a kibbutz. Um, Many, many kibbutz, whether they're religious or secular, have volunteer programs. So your opportunities are very broad. You can talk to Young Judea. Um, just type up, type in the computer Young Judea. They'll, they'll show you young, um, volunteer programs. Type in um, B'nai Akiva. There's plenty of programs with B'nai Akiva with volunteering. Or even call Nefesh Benefesh. Or the, uh, you know, call the um, Israeli embassy or the Israeli consulate in New York City. And they'll give you numbers to call for volunteering uh, on a kibbutz. And you can see how it goes. And even if you don't want to make Aliyah, you can volunteer on a kibbutz. And you can do it for three months, six months, a year. You know, there's plenty of time to, uh, to enjoy a kibbutz. God bless you all. And um, check out kibbutz. It's a great experience. And I've never met anybody in my life that did not tell me it was one of the or the greatest experience of their life and on a side note you don't need to be Jewish to be a volunteer on a kibbutz. Keep, many kibbutzim take non-Jewish uh, people um, to volunteer. So God bless you and check it out. Amen.